Hello, I'm Grin Grimsley, and welcome to another episode of Op Shop Holes. And uh, to begin with, I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit strange. I'm currently suffering through a cold right now, but the show must go on. And so let's go on. Today's episode has a few more books in it than normal. It's a little bit literature heavy, mainly because not only did I go to the regular op shops that I usually go to, but I also found myself wandering into a few secondhand bookstores. And so to begin with, rather topical recently, I picked up Notre Dame by Victor Hugo, which, yes, he does sound like a Batman villain, but it's actually the gentleman who wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is what this is. The copy I got apparently was once belonging to an Owen W. Thompson, who apparently received it in 1950 for the Bursary Award. How it found its way into the op shop, I don't know. I'm not sure what the Bursary Award is, but as I now own the book, I believe technically I now won that award. And so, while I've seen this story told in several different film versions, I've never actually read the novel, and considering recent rather unfortunate events, it was somewhat on the top of my mind, and so when I saw it on the shelves, I figured I should pick it up and give it a watch. So that's the first one. And then in the similar vein of things I've seen but not read, I got Alfred Hitchcock Bar the Doors, which is just an assortment of 13 different short stories chosen by Hitchcock, written by some pretty big names here. I've watched the Alfred Hitchcock Presents TV show and listened to various radio shows hosted by him, but not read a book selection of him, so once again, I look forward to digging into that one there. And while we're sticking with the theme of Hitchcock, H.G. Wells, and Heroes of Horror, Sci-Fi, and Suspense, I also picked up two or three works by Isaac Asimov. I say two or three because, as it turns out, two and three are, by the looks of it, the exact same thing. I've not looked at them close enough to see if there's any additional work in one that's not in the other, but it does look like I probably accidentally bought just a newer version of the old book while I was in a different location. So, if that's the case, I'll likely just end up trading away one of them and keeping these two. But regardless, I look forward to digging into it anyway. Asimov is of course one of the best, if not the best, science fiction author to ever live, so I definitely look forward to reading some more of his works. And if you're wondering why I said I would probably keep that one and not that one if they are the same, well, it's rather simply just because I think it's a better cover. I mean, they're both kind of showing the same thing. But I don't know, this one looks more 1960s trippy, and this one, it's alright, but I like this one better. So let's continue moving on with the sci-fi horror theme. I also got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by R.L. Stevenson. Once again, this is another story that I've seen multiple different times in several different film adaptations, but never had a chance to give the book a read, so I look forward to digging into that one. And while we're still talking about science fiction and horror, I also picked up a copy of The Truth Is Out There, the official guide to the X-Files. I really like The X-Files, it's a great series, and I also really enjoy behind-the-scenes things, as you would know if you've watched any of these previous op shop hauls. And this is basically just a large encyclopedia that gives you the lowdown of behind-the-scenes stuff in each episode that was made up into the release of this book. So I look forward to maybe watching some of the show again, and sitting down and learning a bit more of it as I go. And then finally for the last of the literature part of this video, I also got The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. I've not read nearly enough Mark Twain, he is of course one of the most well-known authors to ever live, but I wouldn't really be able to quote any of his works too well, so when I saw it I figured I should pick it up and put it on my reading list. But I've got to be honest, more than anything, I was sold by how beautiful the book looked. They say don't judge a book by its cover, but I most certainly did. It's this really nice purple cover with embossed gold writing, and it just looks really nice. So, until I do get around to reading it, it's going to look really good on the bookshelf, so that's a plus I guess. And uh, so that comes to the end of the literature portion of this video. We're going to move on to the DVDs in a second, but before we do... I also managed to pick up this kangaroo for the Atari 2600. I was pretty excited about this find. You don't often find video games in my local op shops, and pretty much every game I've reviewed on Grim Reviews actually belongs to Grim, so it's kind of cool that I've now got an Atari game of my own. 
It also has a kangaroo punching a monkey on the front. And uh, so, as an Australian, that fills me with a sense of national pride. Good on you, Roo. Punch that monkey. But let's get on to the movies. First up, to add to Grimm's ever-growing science fiction collection, we've picked up Total Recall. I've not personally seen this one. I'm not sure if Grimm has, but it's got three featurettes to begin with, which is always nice. Uh, science fiction versus science fact, designing the foal and the gag reel. I don't really care too much about the gag reel, but I look forward to the mini documentaries that the other two have promised. It's also exciting to note that this movie is not only smart and sexy, but also action-packed. So that's something to look forward to. And then moving slightly on from the science fiction to the science fiction horror element, we've got Godzilla. Get into focus. There we go. We've got Godzilla. It's the 1999 version. At least I think it was 99. It's either 1999 or 2000. It's the one that most people don't like in which Godzilla looks more like a giant dinosaur than the dragon dinosaur whale hybrid he looks like in the Japanese movies. Either way, I personally didn't dislike this movie, and I don't have it on DVD. If anything, we might have it taped up at the TV on a VHS, so I look forward to seeing it in higher detail. It's also interesting to note that it brags about having a interactive menu to help access special features, and then what appears to be a screenshot of that interactive menu with language, audio, subtitles, scene selection, extra features, start, movie, and resume. But it still doesn't actually say what those extra features are. So I look forward to finding out what that is, but at the moment don't really know. Either way, I look forward to putting this on the shelf between the Japanese Godzilla movies and the new Godzillaverse ones that are currently coming out. And then into what I presume is pretty much just horror, we've got Eight-Legged Freaks. I really, really don't like spiders. I find them absolutely terrifying, so this movie might actually get me a little bit frightened, and I look forward to that. It's apparently by the makers of Independence Day and Godzilla. That's once again this Godzilla, not the Toho one, so thanks for that. Very topical there. So I look forward to seeing this one. And considering that it is a movie about giant versions of one of my phobias, it's sure to scare my pants off. It also brags a pretty large amount of special features. And if it's anything like the old black and white tarantula movie or whatever it's called, I'm sure it's going to be pretty darn good. And then moving on to Sword and Fantasy, I picked up Conan the Barbarian. I have actually seen this, but it was quite a few years ago and I was suffering from pretty bad heat stroke at the time, so I really remember pretty much nothing about the film, and look forward to revisiting it while I'm not feeling truly terrible. I also got That 70s Show Season 1. Focus. That 70s Show Season 1. One of the funniest shows I've ever seen about the 70s, if not possibly the only one, and it comes with special features including all 25 episodes of Season 1, which really should be expected for a box set of season one of the show, as well as also having Hello Wisconsin, season one featurette, so I look forward to that. Promo Palooza, which I assume is trailers for the show, and a That 70s Show trivia show. I don't know what that's going to be. I look forward to finding out, and if it's interesting enough, maybe I'll make a video answering the trivia if it's some sort of game show set up. Either way, as I said, if you've not seen this show, definitely check it out. It is actually, I believe, available on Netflix, or at least is currently available on Netflix in Australia. But now that I've got it on DVD, I can watch it whenever I want, even when the terrible Australian internet is down, or when Grimm stops me from being able to mooch off of his Netflix account. Then, moving on to the final selection, I actually got all of these at the exact same time. I went past cash converters and they were doing 5 DVDs for $4, and figured why not. And so I picked up Super, a little piece. I'm assuming it's Superman and a little piece of... Superman? I don't really know because cash converters in their infinite wisdom decided to stick their sticker over top of the title. Really hate it when they do that, but what can you do? It seems to just be a selection of episodes from the animated series. 
And I enjoyed that series, but I actually don't own it, so look forward to revisiting it there. I also got May, with the subtitle, Be Careful, She Might Just Take Your Heart. And it appears to be just some kind of generic horror movie. Not one, but two audio commentaries. And the trailer, so... I'll probably watch it during Halloween. I try to watch one horror movie each day throughout Halloween, and so it helps to have a pretty good selection to go through. And on that note, I also picked up this double feature from Masters of Horror, consisting of Incident on and off a mountain road, bit of a wordy title there, and a chocolate. So, really don't know anything about those two movies either. It's two ones I've never heard of or seen, and so I look forward to finding out. And then moving briefly back into Sword and Sorcery and Sci-Fi, I got Futurama, Bender's Game. I have seen this, but it's well worth owning, especially because it has a pretty heaping large amount of special features. Look at that. We've got Easter Eggs Audio Commentary, Storyboard Animatic, Futurama Genetics Lab, a bunch of featurettes, and then even more on the other side there. So that's the two main fantasy sword and sorcery things we've got today. One of them's, I guess, technically science fiction, but pretty different, but both going to be enjoyable. And then the fifth in the five for four dollars deal I got, I got The Simpsons Christmas 2, which gives you four vaguely Christmas episodes. I mean, Homer vs. Dignity is not really Christmas at all. I think he dresses up as Santa Claus in the last minute, but definitely not at Christmas time. I don't even remember this episode, but apparently he tries to write a Christmas carol. Really have no memory of that whatsoever, so I do look forward to that one. And then the last two are actually proper Christmas episodes. Two of the best, in fact, especially that one. So, it's a wash. The way I grabbed it to add to our ridiculously large collection of Christmas movies and DVDs, and it was one we didn't have, and I needed a fifth DVD anyway to get the deal, so I figured, why not? Tis the season after all. And so that brings us to the end of this episode of Upshop Holes. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, I apologize for my voice sounding weird and nasally, and I think I'm now going to retreat back to the couch, maybe watch some of that 70s show, and drink some chicken noodle soup. Representative currently wearing this shirt. Are you sick of going around with no shirt on? Are you tired of your friends making fun of you for not owning enough clothes with bears on it? Well, that can all change today thanks to Channel Grim and Grin's own grizzled old sailor shirt. It's a grizzly bear who is a sailor. Get it? Well, you can get it today by following the link in the description and buying it. Remember, it's only money, so you might as well give it to us in exchange for this shirt. Don't go bare-chested, go bare-chested with a Channel Grim Grin Grizzle Sailor shirt today.